In this video, we're going to look at geometric probability. And so in geometric probability, we often look at our chance of a randomly selected point being within a portion of an entire figure. For example, what's the chance that a randomly selected point in the figure falls within the shaded region? If I were to pick a point at random that's somewhere on this diagram, what are our chances that the point I selected is in this shaded area? So here, we're going to take our previous definition of probability, and we're just going to slightly tweak it. So previously, we said the probability of an event would be the number of successes out of total outcomes. Well, what we're going to do here is we're just going to barely change that. For our geometric probability, we're going to say the probability of an event happening is going to be the area, or you could say desired area, or the area of successes out of total areas. So you can, you can see it's basically the same definition that we've been using for probability. We're just changing it, it slightly to change our successes and our total outcomes to being in terms of areas, okay? The area we want out of the total area. And so let's look at this example. And so this is a very easy example to help us kind of um, get our legs under us and understand the concept, but it says find the probability that a randomly selected point will fall in the purple region, okay? So, so here what we would do is we would say, okay, we want the area of successes, and I'm still gonna write it out because we're still getting the idea out of total area. Now here, we can kind of abbreviate our process a little bit because while we don't know the area of every single triangle, nor do we know the area of the entire hexagon, we can still do our areas as ratios. Basically, if I looked at this as parts, there are six parts, but our successes is three of those parts. So that's the same thing as one half or 50%. So while our, our definition is in terms of areas, you could look at it as, as parts that are successes out of total parts if you wanted to, and you would get the same idea. Now I think it's common sense. If you were to randomly pick a spot on here, well, half of our little triangles are purple, so there's a 50% chance that you're going to land in a purple triangle. Now let's kick it up just a slight notch. I think maybe this would be one that if you feel comfortable, I'd say pause the video and attempt this on your own and see how you do. Um, but if I were to randomly pick a point in the circle, what's the probability that it lies in the red sector? Well, um, while you may not need the formula or our probability definition to answer this, I think it would be helpful if you used it because it's going to help you understand for later problems that are more complicated. But um, basically, we have area of, how about I abbreviate it, area of success over total area. Or we'll just do over total. I'm kind of getting a little lazy with my abbreviation. But what we have is now, instead of looking at the area, we could still look at this as a, as a fraction or a percentage of the whole thing. We know that there's um, 180 degrees to that central angle, and all of these angles added together would be 360. Therefore, that simplifies to one half or 50%. Keep in mind, if you're comfortable with circles, we can look at the, um, how do I word this, the what fraction of the entire area each sector is will be the same as the fraction of 360 that each central angle is. In other words, 120 degrees right here is one third of 360. Therefore, this green sector will be one third of the whole area. Oh, and I guess I kind of spoiled it for number two. So if we jump down to number two, we know that the area we want out of the total area is going to be the same thing as 120 degrees over 360 degrees. So um, if we simplified it, that would simplify to one-third or roughly 33%. So there's a 33% chance if we picked a random spot in this circle, it would be in the green area. Now, what if I, I just change my wording a little bit? What about... Um, what's our chance that it lies in an area that is not the green sector? I didn't really word that well, but you get the idea. Well, here, you could look at this one of a few different ways. You could do 1 minus 33%, because you could just take away the green area, and everything else is the area that we're looking for. Or you could say, okay, well, this is 60 degrees, and this is 180 degrees, therefore 240 over 360, our successes over our total, is going to be equal to two-thirds or roughly 67%, okay? So you got a 67% chance if you randomly picked a point, it would be either in the blue or the red. Let's kick it up a notch. Here's an example that I think is a little bit better. It says, Tyler's throwing darts at this figure. 
So we're going to assume that he does land on the dartboard. So we, we throw out the possibility that he like misses the dartboard completely. But let's say that if he were to land on the dartboard, what's the probability of landing in the triangle? Well, here we're thinking we want the, the area of our successes, which would be the area of this triangle, out of the total area, which would be the area of this square. So we got some geometry to do to figure out our areas. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little thing pop up. So maybe uh, pause the video, see if you can find the area of this triangle, and see if you can find the total area of the square. And there it is. So, so let me kind of catch up and write down what we got. So the probability of landing in the triangle is going to be the area of successes out of the total area. So here, the area of our success, I skipped through the math on it. I think the total area is pretty easy to find. If this is a square, that's just 10 times 10. So the 10 times 10 is just going to be a 100. Our total area of this whole figure is 100. Now we just got to figure out the area of this triangle right here. And the area of a triangle is going to be base times height divided by 2. The thing is we don't know the base here. But hopefully you recognize it's a right triangle. You know one leg in the hypotenuse. So we can do Pythagorean theorem to reveal that the base of this triangle is actually 4. I'm not going to go through the Pythagorean theorem right now. But if you know that's 4, then the area of your triangle is base times height divided by 2 or 6. So I'll say all that to say your odds of a dart landing in this triangle is 6%. Assuming it's all drawn to scale, and who knows if it is. Now, what's the probability of landing in the circle? So let me copy down my formula. Okay, got my formula there. The probability of landing in the circle is the area of the successes over our total area. So here, the area of our successes is going to be the area of this circle. And I've already got it up here for us. The area of our circle is going to be pi r squared. So our radius is 2. So if we do pi times 2 squared, it's 4 pi. That's the area of our successes. That's 4 pi once again, out of our total outcomes, which is 100. So what that, what that ends up becoming is that ends up becoming a 0.126-ish, which is roughly 13%. Okay. Lastly, what's the probability of landing outside both the circle and the triangle, but still in the square? Okay, so, so now we already did the probability of this. We already did the probability of this. Now, what's the probability of landing in um, neither, basically? So, um, pause the video, try this one, and see what you get. So, uh, what's currently popping into my head is we can solve it with the algorithm. We can do the steps and do the math in this, which we're about to do. But we also know that you could just subtract, take 1, and subtract 6%, and subtract 13%. If there's a 6% chance of landing here and a 13% chance of landing here, then all these rest, all the rest of this area in this square should be 81%. But let's do the math to, to, to find out for sure. Okay, so our, our area of the not the circle and not the triangle is the same as the area of our successes over our total area. And so here we gotta think critically about what the area of our successes. I think the total area is still easy to calculate. That's still gonna be a 100, right? But what we have to do is we could find the area that we want. And if I were to shade it up in this picture, the area we want is everything that's not the triangle and not the circle. Anything in that yellow area is what we want. So what I could do to find it is you might be saying, okay, I could take the area of the square and subtract the area of the circle and subtract the area of the triangle. So let's do that. I could do 100 minus the area of the circle, which was 4 pi, and the area of the triangle, which was 6. So we had to take the, once again, the whole area, subtract the area we don't want, and this would represent the area we do want, or the area of our successes. So once I basically punch all that into the calculator, you're going to get roughly um, 0.814, which, as we said, is 81%. Now, let's look at a different um, kind of representation of the geometric probability. We can look at it on a number line. Okay, so in this figure, what's the probability that a point on DE chosen at random is on GE? Okay, 
And so what, what we're looking at here is we can tweak our geometric probability definition for what we want. So we want the probability that we're landing on GE here. So what we want to do is we want to do how we're going to change it. Instead of saying area, we're going to say the length of our, um, you could say the successes or the desired outcome, but the length of the successes out of the total length. So we're basically just changing those words, those area words to length. And so here, what's the length of our success? Well, the length of our success would be the length of GE here, okay? which is 1 over the total length, which is the length of the entire segment, which is 10. That means we have a 10% chance that if we randomly picked a point on this number line, it would be in this little region right here. So in the figure, what's the probability that a point on FE chosen at random is on FG? So let's kind of, uh, let me kind of, I'll kind of copy this down again. So once again, we're, we're now getting the probability that we randomly lay, land on FG. Now, notice this is the point on FE. So it's like we're only really considering this. So we're finding that a point that's on FE, chosen at random, is on FG. So we gotta, we got to think about this critically here. Our, our success, the length of our success, well, that's just going to be the length of the segment we want, which is FG. But our total outcomes here is not the whole is not the whole thing like it was in the first problem. It's the length of FE. So FG right here has a length of three, and FE has a length of four. Therefore, with on if a point's on FE, there's a three fourths or a seventy five percent chance that that point is on FE. So here's our last uh, slide for this lesson, and, and I would encourage you to um, pause the video, attempt it on your own, and see how you do. Okay, so here, find the probability that a point on HP lies between J and K. So if we were to do this, we need to, um, I always kind of like to write out our, our um, probability definition, what we know, and here... So find the, the probability that HP lies between J and K. So if it's on HP, we have to first analyze um, how long HP is because that's our total length. So um, the probability of JK is, or of uh, our point being on JK, is going to be the length of the desired segment over the total length. Well, our total length is 10 because um, if it's on... HP, HP has a length of 10 units. It goes from 5 to 15. And then in between J and K is right there. That's just a length of 1. So that's just a 10% chance. Okay. The second one says, find the probability that a point on JR lies between L and M. So we have to first identify JR. So JR is right there. So um, the probability of landing on LM is going to be the length of our successes over our total length, where our total length here is JM. And that looks like it goes, um, excuse me, JR, I said JM, didn't I? That length of JR goes all the way from, it looks like 6 to 18, so that length would be 12. This length is 12, that's our total length. But then the length that we're looking for, the length of our success, is the length of LM. So LM is right there. So that looks like a length of 2 out of an entire length of 12. That's roughly 0.17. And I guess this one says the answer is a decimal. So you could leave it there or you could take that to 17%. Now let's do this last one, okay? And I am getting a little bit lazy about writing out our, my probability definitions. It takes so long. So, but let me write it out again right here. Okay, so, so here we're looking for the length of our successes, or our desired length over the total length. And so if you look here, a point on LQ, that means 
LQ is the total length. So our total length is the length of LQ. And we're finding out what's the probability it lies between M and N. So that means the length of M and N is the desire. That's our success, okay? So MN, if I look at this, MN has a length of 1. I can see it right there. And then the length of LQ is this length right here that I can also see, and it's 6. So it looks like we've got a length of 1 over a total length of 6. That would mean that a randomly selected point has also a 0.17, or roughly, I guess I should say roughly, 17% chance of picking it. So um, I hope this video helps. Just remember that we're just basically ch barely changing our definition of probability to fit um, areas and number lines instead of successes and total outcomes.